let's kick this off for everyone that's attending as you uh, if you might you might know ob observing on twitter uh this is i think round three of tim and the crew here head-to-head -head cage match blogging versus digital writing you grabbed your tickets it's gonna get intense no i'm just kidding um <laughs> tim maybe to, to set the stage for everybody uh would love to just hear how you define the two and maybe we can use that to frame the conversation we can bounce, bounce around yeah and you know what that's a really good idea because i think about this kind of stuff a lot as i think you guys do as well um uh, thanks alicia and I think the word blogging sometimes is, it's not the same as it used to be. So there's a guy that I read, his name is Fred Wilson. He's got a, a pretty famous blog. It's called AVC. It's like a, a pretty well-known uh, venture capitalist guy. He runs a venture firm called Union Square. And 20, like 15, 20 years ago, the thing to do was to have a blog. And it was like, wake up every day and kind of write about your thoughts and write about what it is that you're interested in and maybe new things that you're learning. Um, and so like traditionally, when people think of the word blogging, I think that they still think it means waking up every day, doing like 300, 400 words, maybe, maybe a post every two or three days or so. Um, and, and that's great. And if that's what you want to do, then do it. I think that's really cool for creative writers. I don't think, though, that that mechanism of creating content online is conducive to like building an audience that is going to be willing to purchase services or products from you. So like I, I, I've really been thinking about this a lot over the course of like the last seven months as I've, as I've been like witnessing this kind of transformation with what you guys are doing and and with even how like Google is interacting with content because so much of what Google does now is display like the answer to search queries like directly on Google as opposed to like linking through to the content, you know? And so I, I think that we need to come up with like, like a new definition that is somewhere in between like blogging and, and like on-site publishing. Um, so I don't have like a perfect answer for you but like what, what I do and what I advocate for, I don't think is what blogging used to be like 10 years ago and what people think blogging is. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of my long-winded, various meandering answer to the question. Um, Cause I'm, I'm really thinking about it. And like truth is I don't, I don't totally know. And maybe, maybe give just some context for everyone here. I mean, how, how does writing play into your ecosystem quick nutshell, what are your businesses and kind of, you know, what, what's the benefit of writing to you? Yeah, well, man, that's the question, right? I, I am, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm like, just getting comfortable saying that, you know, <laughs> because it, it just feels weird. And, and I'm thinking to myself like, well, I've built like seven of these brands by now. Like, I guess that means I'm an entrepreneur. Um, but if somebody asked me like, what if, what I am, I say, I'm a writer because everything that I've done and everything that I built really stems from just the blank page, you know, like, I think I got like a, a really beautiful relationship with that. Um, so it all started for me. My, my, my journey is like pretty well known, but I think a little bit unique. I got sober 12 years ago and I started a blog called sober nation, which is just a giant resource center for people that are also struggling with like addiction and recovery and whatever. Um, and like, it's interesting because this was when Facebook was totally different than it is now. Like I had a Facebook page with 20,000 people on it and I would post an article and I would just watch the live analytics as like the article would explode and go viral. And like, you just can't do that anymore. Um, and so like, I still think of blogging with that, like telling stories online and those stories would spread by nature of something that was published on an actual domain. And so like it transitioned a little bit because I think what's important now, okay, so Sober Nation was my first brand, excuse me. And then through that, I saw an opportunity to create an agency really specific within like the behavioral healthcare space. Um, and, and I've grown that business pretty significantly over the last 10 years. And what writing has done is writing has allowed me to align intent with action. 
And so the reason why I love writing on websites so much and why like I'm looking for a new term with blogging is that if somebody searches for something on Google, the only reason that they ever do that is because they need to solve a problem. Like it's the only reason anybody ever goes to Google ever. They just have a problem and they need to solve it. And so if you can create content that aligns the solution to the problem with like your business or your product, the conversion rate on the people reading your stuff is just so high because like you already know what it is they're looking for. Like they are quite literally telling you that they need what it is that you're selling just by nature of the query that they searched. And so it's, it's like that alignment that I've built all of my companies around just thinking, what is the problem that these people need to solve? And like, what would they be searching for in order to solve that problem? And then how can I get that attention and put a product or a service that solves that problem for them directly in front of them? And it's just worked out really well for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, where I want to go with that is how, how that's changing, right? So you said, you know, Facebook, you were able to just drop a blog. Now it was intent versus action. And where my head goes is, okay, intent versus action. Someone is searching for how do I solve X problem? One on Google, it's probably a winner take all market where whoever is sitting at that number one spot is probably taking 80 to 90%. It's likely a power law versus someone who is potentially uh, social blogging, digital writing, writing on these social platforms, almost building a relationship with people and then solving the audience's specific problems. So it's less search intent, but it's more, hey, you're following me because you have this set of problems and then I'm going to solve each of them specifically. So how do you think about that difference and maybe are we headed in one direction or the other? I don't know if we're heading in one direction or another. Google as big brother as they are, is like really honest. And I, and I mean that, like they tell you exactly what it is that they're up to. And there's not a whole lot of like surprise algorithm changes with them. Like they'll even tell you the date that they're gonna make some changes and like what these changes are gonna do. So it's been, um, I mean, it could be volatile, but it's been relatively like predictable, much more predictable than social media, I think. Um, what I think is important so you're right. There's definitely some like Pareto principle laws there where there's like some winner. I'd say winner take most is probably like a good way to think about it. But the best thing about it is that there's no shortage of things that people search. And so there's always like a low hanging fruit that will allow you to work your way into a market. Right. So I'll give you an example. Um, we saw an opportunity for test prep. Uh, there's a test that people take that's very difficult. It's called the LSAT. It's basically the test you have to take to pass the bar. And it's like really hard, probably one of the hardest tests in the world. And so people spend a lot of money preparing for this test because you only get like two shots at it. I think you get two. Um, and if you don't pass, then you don't pass the bar. And then you just went to like law school for eight years for nothing, right? Um, and so we were messing around with search terms and I was like, damn, I think there's like an opportunity here. And so instead of just building a website and going right for like, what, how do I pass the LSAT? We wrote 15 to 20 to 30 articles on what we call long tail, like longer search queries that have intent, but aren't so directly aligned with like the, the big power move, right? Because someone's always going to own that really difficult search word. Like someone's always going to own best LSAT prep test. You know, that's probably the best example there. Um, and so. Can you give an example of like what one of those long tail keywords would be? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, well, the website is lsatclarity.com. Um, so like reviews, maybe we went, we researched like 10 of the test prep courses and then mm. we just wrote reviews on them. You know, that's like long tail. That's much more low hanging fruit. And those are battles that like you can win. And then slowly, like you get a little bit of momentum and that Google says like, oh, okay, these guys know what they're doing. These guys know what they're doing. Um, and then, yeah, it gets to a point where it's like all of a sudden you're one of the people that is sharing in like the most of the pie. 
And then the reason why like I really advocate for it so much, and I think this is where Cole and I always kind of um, trade blows with each other, is that once you like do the hard work on this, then time really works for you. You know, like I haven't published anything on that website for a while. Whereas like, I'm trying to get on your guys' level with Twitter. You know, I got like 11,000 followers. I'm looking up to you guys in order to do it. Shit, like I got to come up with like four or five ideas a day. And like, I think that's kind of exhausting, you know? And so the reason why I like publishing on a website is that you got to have the stomach for it. Like you publish things without there being like an instant reward. You know, you don't get that dopamine feedback, but like, if you stick with it, you get to the point where then all of a sudden time is like working for you as opposed to you having to constantly like feed the beast. Yeah, I feel like the the distinction here that I want to double click on is like, Tim, it's not like you're waking up in the morning going, I came up with this idea and I think it's interesting. And you go write that on your site. You're yeah. taking the opposite approach where you're starting with the, what is the problem? What is the question someone's asking? And then you're, and then you're just reverse engineering and going, I'm going to go create that. Right. That's exactly right. And I think to your point, Cole, that is that like never ending trap that writers fall into because somewhere along the line, we, we came up with like this artist's complex, you know, where it's like, if I just keep writing and keep telling stories somehow, some way, someone's going to find my writing and they're just going to like me. And then like, you know, that'll be great. Um, that's never happened for me, not once ever. And I think the, the distinction, like you said, is it's very reverse engineered. Like you start at the end, you start at the objective, and then you formulate your content around the solution to what your, your customers or clients would be. And so, yeah, like I, don't get, like, like I said before, if you enjoy it, and you just want to start a blog and like write shit every day and it feels good for you, then totally do that. You know, like I'm not saying that you should behave in one way or the other. What I'm saying is that like, if you want to make money, then you have to really, really think about how you're going to do it because eventually you'll just, you'll get exhausted because like blogging into the void is exhausting. I yeah. think there's a distinction here with, like LSAT Clarity, I don't think is going to start a Twitter account and go and find people to sell LSAT review courses for. There's a distinction where I think the individual creator who potentially wants to monetize their ability to write and solve problems as an individual, I don't think the SEO route necessarily lines up as much as, hey, I'm going to go provide valuable content in a feed where I'm going to attract that group of people. And I think it's not necessarily one or the other, but it's which game are you trying to play, right? If I, I don't think you sat down and were like, for the rest of my life, I want to be the LSAT guy and I want to write nothing about LSAT and I'm going to build my whole content strategy around it. But it's more, hey, I think there's this, you know, untapped piece of digital real estate. And that's how I think of SEO. I think of SEO as digital real estate, meaning there's certain answers and questions that once you ask, you kind of own that, that piece of the internet and all that traffic and reward is going to come to you versus social blogging and writing on Twitter and LinkedIn and things like that. It's, you don't own your renting, but that doesn't mean that you can't still kind of monetize in, in that way. Yeah, I think you're totally right. Um, I also think that for me personally, there's an advantage to, there, there's like a law of, of, of big numbers when it comes to the social blogging. There, there gets to a point where it's like the bigger you get, the bigger you get, right? Because SEO is not going to compound on itself the same way that like Twitter or LinkedIn or probably even still Facebook can do. Because the more people follow you, then the more shares you get and then the more people follow you. So there's like a real snowball effect there. But I, I do think that with search in particular, there's a, how do I say this? Like you can jump 
in real leaps and bounds for particular industries that that you're right, Dickie, like wouldn't necessarily be applicable. You know, so for instance, if I'm a local plumber and I focus four years of my life on ranking for local plumbing keywords, like my life is is totally changed. If I were a local plumber, I'm telling you right now, I would instantly do at least like two or three million bucks a year. Because once you, if somebody searches for plumbing in Nashville and you win, like, then you just win, you know? And so if you're in the top three, then, then you get all of it. And, and there's actually not a whole lot of like sophisticated business owners that understand how Google works. And so Mm -hmm. I, I, I wish I could educate smaller brands that just, you don't need to be like HubSpot. You know, let's say you're a writer, let's say you're a freelance writer and and like you live in Nashville. Another good example, if you can own freelance writer in Nashville, if you can own freelance writer that specializes in, I don't know, test prep to use that same example, you could instantly change your life just because there's nobody swimming in that pond, but there's still, there's still plenty to plenty of money to be made in those search queries. Tim, it sounds like this, I mean, you should create a product around that. I totally agree. Like the number of small businesses that don't understand how Google works is a lot. And I think, and I see it in so many verticals, like everyone jumps to the extreme and they're like, I'm either HubSpot or I'm nothing. Yeah. Oh, and, and the reality is there's a giant chasm between the two. Yeah. And like, when you see those people, it's intimidating. Like HubSpot, it's probably my favorite website ever. And it's not even necessarily because I read it. It's just because of like, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. Like I grew up as a contractor and this sounds a little bit silly. I think this is why I like SEO so much. Like I was always a writer, but I was like a, like a blue collar kid from Philly, right? Like I built houses for all of my upbringing. And when you see websites in terms of like the structure of them, and you just learn about the structure of code and links and pages and how like it's all placed together, almost like rooms, you know, like in different rooms of the the website, like different sections have like different feels. And, you know, like if I'm, if this room behind me is telling Google, like, what is this room about? Like, oh, this is like the nerd room. And then what's like the kitchen about? And so like, you can actually structure your website in a way that says like, Hey, Google, this part of my website is about like this and HubSpot. It's like, it's so beautifully done how they did it. So I I don't know why I went down that little rabbit hole, but yeah, I'm a HubSpot fanboy for sure. (laughs) It's fascinating. I mean, I totally agree. It is like your website is like building a house. And I think the takeaway for everyone here, I mean, and this will segue into another question I have, but like, you know, you said, okay, you've built multiple successful businesses, taking the SEO writing on a website approach and not really as much via social. And we've done the complete opposite. We have like no real SEO driving, you know, a ton of our business. It's all been on social and both work, you know, like both clearly you can build something out of. So I guess I'm curious if you've really found and mastered this lane, what is your desire to want to start doing more on social? Is it like a diversification thing or what's, how are you thinking about that? (laughs) Well, I'm 36. I got a 16 month old and we're going to have a second one in September. Um, I'm done after that. Yeah. By the way, I actually found out when I was in Miami and it was not expected to say, (laughs) you know, like one was totally fine. Um, But (laughs) I guess I'm a family man now. And like, this will sound a little bit pretentious. I really, really don't mean it to, but I've spent a lot of years really like automating and organizing the structure and the processes of what I got going on. And uh, I'm kind of at this spot now where it's like, I wake up in the morning and I do my morning writing and I go to the gym and I come home and I check out my task management system. And it's like, okay, everybody's doing what they got to do for the day. And I I don't know, I just have like an itch. Like I'm I'm an anxious, nervous person that always kind of likes to be like tinkering around with stuff. And so I, I, I'm going for it. Like I've been working really hard on my Twitter, on my LinkedIn. I went, I had my first like real, real viral tweet, which got me a couple of thousand emails. And like, that was exciting, you know? So I see why you guys catch the bug where like you're steady chasing that dragon. Um, (laughs) 
you know, I, I hired somebody to do a bunch of, um, like real quick one minute Instagram videos and, and he's going to do all that stuff for me. And, and we'll see what happens. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily know where I'm going with it. I'm, I'm really, really grateful and like happy and, and just feeling satisfied with where I am. But, but I know there's more out there that like, I want to explore. Um, and like, you, like you guys inspire me really. I, I'm not saying that's just because I'm on here. Like it's, it's cool to see, this new avenue of people being able to share ideas and like share, share contacts. And, and not only that, but share like the, the specific things that they can do in only the way that they can, you know, like there's nobody in the world that can market like local healthcare and behavioral healthcare websites. Like I can, you know, it's just, there's just nobody out there. And so like, I think it's cool that I have like this real specific thing that I can bring into to other ways. Like I can apply these lessons to local businesses like we just talked about. So, um, so I don't know, I, I don't know where it's going, but I'm, I'm having fun. Um, well, let's talk, let's talk some tactic strategy. What have you found that's working? What's your current game plan? So your weekly Twitter, what are you trying to drive kind of traffic to your Instagram or TikTok? Let's, let's workshop this a little bit. Well, everything is email addresses. It's the first thing I say when even I hire a contractor, like, this is really great. Cool. These views are great. I really don't care. I don't necessarily want to be Insta famous. I just want email addresses. Um, and that's always, that's always the objective for me. I, I've, I mean, I'm a writer and I love copy and I, it's just the coolest thing in the world when you see how copy works and how like, we think that we're influenced by certain things, but really we're influenced by words and we always will be. And so if, if you can put copy together in a certain way, um, you can just always be successful. So, so, okay, where am I going with that? Um, I've learned through tweets and through Twitter threads that like that first tweet is basically your copy is your headline. If you don't get them, then you never got them. That's been a lot of fun. Um, like some gimmicky stuff, which is kind of embarrassing. And then you try to find like more creative ways to do it. And you realize that like humans are just humans. And so like, if you put the <laughs> reward, you know, like if you put the reward in the first tweet, you'll get the, the click on the thread. Um, volume, definitely like Hype Fury in particular is probably one of the coolest products I've ever used. It's just, I t I'm a very like habitual person. And so I wake up in the morning and I just, I, I, I do my morning routine on Rome that I have. And then I write all of my tweets and then I kind of forget about it. Um, you know, what, what else have I learned? Virality is definitely a real thing. Like there's still some Pareto principle things going on. You could tweet for weeks and weeks. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, something just pops off and you don't even necessarily know why, but I guess once you do it long enough, you stop trying to figure it out and you know that like, who cares? You just keep putting stuff out there because the law of averages will make it that one day, one thing will go viral. Um, it, that, that's, it's, it's like, I always have to remind myself that it's okay to repeat yourself, you know, because I forget that most people don't think of these things as like just common like I do because I've just been typing words on the internet for so long but like the same principles that I've always applied really, really still apply. And it's just a matter of like repetition, repetition, consistency, and then <laughs> poof, <laughs> you know? I think those principles are almost magnified. The importance of copy is far greater on Twitter, I think, than on Google and SEO because you're competing in a sea of like something I say all the time is if you want to improve your writing, write 10 tweets a day for six months, because wow. you're going to learn how to capture attention, keep attention and deliver value to attention very quickly. Um, what I also like, Tim, is you step into this game as someone who has a lot of experience in another domain without an ego, because I think a lot of people come into Twitter and they're like, oh, the like, oh, you got to do this. And I don't want to write a clickbait headline or I don't want to, you know, uh, Twitter threads or crimp, whatever it is. And I think so many writers aren't getting the full benefits of Twitter because they come in with this ego of like, I shouldn't have to do that, right? And instead, I like that you, you make the flip of if you're writing something high quality, 
or you have a product that is going to genuinely help people, it's your moral responsibility to do everything you can to drive attention to it. So why wouldn't you use what is right now by far the most viral distribution engine out there, which is Twitter, Twitter threads, writing tweets and, and all that. So I like that you're going down that route without thinking you're too good for it, for lack of a better word. Thank you. That's legitimately very meaningful to me because um, everybody has life experiences, you know, and I'm like not special, but I, I make it a point to always remember that this is all like a gift and it can just be taken away at any second, you know? Um, and so on that note, I, I've trained myself like really intentionally to continuously do things that just scare me. Um, like I started posting videos of my Muay Thai training. Like that's another one about a year and a half ago, I, I had back surgery a, a couple of years ago and it really affected like my fitness. Like I can't do, can't do squats. I can't do deadlifts anymore. And these were like my favorite things in the world to do. And so I needed something to like really suck at. So I started doing kickboxing and I was a disaster. Like I walked into there thinking that like, I would be good at this. I'm an athlete, no problem. And like I was so terrible at it. It was awful, but I think I'm just fortunate in that I have, I, I had good parents, I think, <laughs> like, really, I just had like blue collar, hardworking parents that just said, show up, do your work for the day, and then move on. You know, I don't win, I don't celebrate too much with the wins, and I don't get too beat up about the things that don't work. Um, but yeah, like, I, I wish I had some kind of cool inspirational advice for that. I, I don't think it's that complicated, really. I guess the advice is that everybody feels stupid. You know, I think that we have this terrible notion that like some people really know what they're doing. Right. And I think maybe some people have a little bit more experience than others at certain things, but that's just life. Like everyone's got more experience than somebody at something, you know? And so I don't want to compare myself to people who have been doing it for a while because I've been doing it longer than somebody else has. You know what I mean? I just, I, I, I'm just fortunate in that regard that I'm, I've always been willing to like look stupid in front of other people. Cause I don't think you can get anywhere in life unless you're willing to do that. That's two right. big, two big realizations I've had is getting to meet a bunch of people. I look up to realizing they're making it all up as they go. <laughs> and then on the flip side is the fear of looking stupid is 100% ego driven because you're assuming everyone's looking at you thinking about what you're doing. And the truth is they are not. That's so you, exactly pair those two, right. you pair those two things together and it, it's a powerful combination for personal growth, right? Not, you're not afraid to look stupid and you realize that everyone you look up to is kind of just winging it as well. So why not you? I, I, I completely agree. And a cool lesson that was taught to me by one of my mentors years ago was like the definition of self-centeredness. He said self-centeredness doesn't mean that like you being selfish, self-centeredness means that you walk into a room and people are laughing and you think that they're laughing at you when like nobody actually cares about you. So like write your tweet, feel stupid, you know, like <laughs> trip on the sidewalk and somebody will help you up and then they're just going to get on with your, with their day. You know, like they're not actually thinking about that idiot that tripped on the sidewalk. Cause I, I was a skater, you know, like I fell on, on pavement thousands of times. And so like, I know what it's like to fall on my face in front of people. I have a I have a little follow up question here, um, VJ. I saw throw throw in the chat, but so Tim, now now that you're you've embraced the I'm a beginner, you know, we all start somewhere. You're writing on Twitter. It's a very different type of thing because when you're writing SEO, you're starting with the question. You're starting with the intent, and then yeah. you kind of know how to work backwards, you know. So when you sit down to write on Twitter, I guess a does is any part of you this is a question we get pretty often actually is does, is any part of you trying to write in social through a ranking lens and b like if you're not starting with a specific search intent or a question what are you starting with how are you thinking about creating yeah um great question and i have a helpful answer this so this actually came from being in recovery uh, truthfully and there's something about, there's like a notion about recovery where you like help others. Um, and 
the idea is that you have experience to share because that's like in anything in life, right? Like you relate to the people that have been through the thing that you are going through. Um, and so like when I didn't necessarily think about this, it actually dawned on me on the rowing machine, um, like eight or nine months ago when I was thinking about this, I was like, like most good realizations. I was going to say, we're all good insights <laughs> happen on the earth. Yeah. Everything good comes from my, my Sunday, 10,000, I call it 10,000 meters. I do every Sunday and it just dawned on me. I was like, Oh my God, like all I have to do is share my experience. And so I, when I try to give advice, it doesn't work out because like, I don't have any advice to give. Like I actually don't know what you should do. I have no idea what any of you should do. All I have is like my experience to share. And so what has worked for me. And like I said, I don't know what will work for you because I don't know anything about what you guys have been through, but like what has worked for me is share my experience because what happens there is like, there's actually no way to like rebuttal that. And there's no like argument. There's no like, Oh, well, I don't think that's the case. It's like, Oh, okay. Well, that's just my experience. And like, there's nothing, there's no debate there. This is just like what I experienced in, in my journey as an entrepreneur. So um, that has been very, very helpful for me. And, you know, like I said, it just, I got lucky. Like it just popped in my head in the rowing machine as like you said, it's like, the only time my mind is quiet <laughs> for the week. <laughs> yeah. And I think kind of bringing it full circle, that's why that's, that's ultimately where our perspective on start by writing in a social environment versus a blog, because I, I find that the vast majority of people who say I want to write are really saying, I want to share my experience. You know, and so it's like if you're coming at it through that lens and you're like, I want to wake up in the morning and I want to share something that I've learned. I want to share a lesson. I want I almost think of it as more of like a from me out to the world sort of thing. Sure. Then it makes sense to to share in an environment where like that it's kind of built for that. You know, Twitter's built for that. Whereas the blogging SEO writing on a site is the almost the complete opposite. It's like, disregard yourself, <laughs> disregard your own experience. Like, what is the search intent? What is the problem that you want to speak to? You're absolutely right. Um, and I, I don't, I think it's important not to be shy or beat around the bush about this. Like if I write something on a website, it is for the sole purpose of trying to make money. Like that's the only reason why I'm doing it. I'm trying to sell something. It doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be a direct sale. Um, so for example, a lot of what I do is lead is lead generation. You know, if, if you give me an industry, I can figure out how to build a website that'll make people want to call. And I've, I've built like net, networks with call centers and, you know, like moving, um, and like stem cells and stuff like that, who, uh, they just take all the calls and then broker deals to different people that can provide that. And so in that particular case, it makes a lot of sense to publish stuff on a website because like you said, Cole, like those are problems that people are trying to solve. And so there's no reason for me to write an article about like my experience with my back surgery, for instance, like that wouldn't necessarily work. It would work to say, you know, how stem cell injections helped me with a spinal fusion because somebody is, is searching for that. And so like, there's a different context, which I definitely think you're absolutely right. We need to um, be mindful of, but like, it doesn't necessarily stop there because it's rare that, well, it's about 20% really, but if somebody searches for that, like they might call right away from one search query, but there's also a possibility that they'll download an ebook that they'll download, um, maybe a video series about like how this product or service affected them. Like, so there's more creative stuff involved with just, with just search and search and destroy, uh, than, than, than you would originally think, like, especially on the conversion side. But I, I guess what I'm saying is that like, you're, you're totally right, Cole. There's no, there's no experience to share outside of the, the objective, of the call. If you're going to bother writing the content, then you want to get a conversion from it or else like, what the hell are you doing? And so I always approach it kind of almost like ruthlessly methodical in that way. Yeah. And I feel like that difference is really, to me, that's the education point. You know, if someone's like day one, where do I start writing? 
it, it all begins with that question, you know, like which game do you want to play? And the answer to that question dictates very different roads. And then I think ultimately, you know, both diverge from the beginning and then they end up in the same place, which is, hey, like if you go the, I want to write and share my experiences on Twitter, eventually you get to the point where you're like, how do I turn this into a business? You know, and so then you end up on, well, maybe I should have my own site. And then all of a sudden they kind of work and work together at the very end of the, of, of the path. I agree. That's how it's happened for me for, for my side as well. Like, because I'm a stubborn mule, I force myself to still write at least 1200 words every Friday on my blog so that like, I can continue to prove to myself that what basically that I'm good, you know, because sometimes you get, you get separated from like the actual art of it because I'm answering client emails or dealing with like, some explosion in an office somewhere, who knows, you know? And so it's just a commitment I made to myself to make sure that I keep my skills sharp. Mm -hmm. And it all came full circle for me as well. You know, there was over the last four years, probably like a, it was a long period of time where I didn't do what you said. Like everything I did was just business, business, business. Like I basically created like a publishing company that intersects with like a bunch of different industries, but it's, it's very formulaic, you know, like we built a process that can just search and destroy. Like I said, like, it's kind of a motto in, in my company, but now here I am full circle. Like, how do I share my experience once, once again? And now I'm on here with you guys. So let, that 1200 word blog post that you published last week, what was that? And do you think about that as driving some kind of sale in some way? Are you using that as a basis for Twitter content? Like what is your, how are your pieces working together now that you're kind of playing in both these games? It's, it all comes from my blog post. So uh, like you guys know how it is. I say I'm going to write 1200 words and then it's like 3,300 words because it's just impossible. <laughs> Yeah, it's easier to write 3,300 than 1,200. It is, yeah. And most of the time is spent deleting stuff. But here's how it works. I wake up Monday, I do research. I try my best to think about what I'm going to write about. I start writing on Thursday because for some reason, if I don't have like a harsh deadline and like some giant weight on my shoulders, then I just can't write it, <laughs> you know? And so like I wait to the last minute, probably on purpose. I write my article. My article goes in my newsletter. So my newsletter is basically just like the 10 coolest things that I found about passive income, really. I, I like the idea of like systems and processes that you can build and then put operators in and then step away. So like every mm -hmm. business you build kind of turns into another income stream. And, and that's what I'm going for. But like the shit that I write on my site is always keyword targeted. It's not as SEO as like some of the other things, but... It is like, I know what I'm trying to do. There's an intent behind it. There's that word again. Right. Um, and then my articles, my Twitter, my LinkedIn, soon to be my Instagram, uh, my YouTube as well. It all goes to my website to collect emails. And then my emails goes into an auto responder connected to a deadline funnel to sell my new product. I launched my first like personal product, very similar to you guys. Um, and you know, I sold 73 issues so far um, and I just launched it last week. And so it's pretty cool. But nice. like, this is the part that I really love because like the automations and stuff sells itself. Like I know how to do that. I know how to create the funnels. I know how to write the copy so that people understand what the value is. And like they understand that it's a good product because I'm, I'm putting my name on it. So it's going to be good, you know. And then once all of that is built, now I just get to step back and write 3000 word articles that if I do it every Friday over the course of the next two or three years, you know, two or three years from now, I'm going to look back at this thing and it's just going to be driving traffic that like, I don't have to continuously work for anymore. And so then like my, my week of tweets comes from that blog post. Like everything comes from the blog post. All, all my videos come from the blog post. Um, even just today, I, implemented like okay i'm going to do one like long form youtube video just like basically reading my blog post and more like conversational tone and then i can optimize the keywords through youtube as well and then mm. you know rinse and repeat rinse and repeat it's just it's i love that process is what i really love to do mm. 
What was the recent blog post? Most it was the, the five personality traits of, of successful people. I went Man, down a well, rabbit well, hole talk, of conscientiousness. Talk, talk me through the, the search intent behind that and where that might lead. So what is, how is someone going to find that post? What are you targeting? Yeah, well, they're going to search for traits of personality traits. Yeah, mm -hmm. personality traits of successful people. That's exactly what it is. There's a little bit less than 80 search queries a month for it. Um, there's only one article ranking and the article that was ranking was basically like a word for word um what's it called dictation of a ty lopez interview that he did on um what's that guy's name with the bars um tom bill billy oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and so um and so it was cool like i found this keyword I was like, damn, this, I thought that there would be more like high level psychological content around it. Um, but there really wasn't like, I expected psychology today be on there. Cause you know, psychology today is another one of those websites like HubSpot that like, I really admire it. Like, it's just a beautiful, beautiful website. I saw it. I was like, I can't believe this. How is psychology today? Not on there. And, and the top article was just some dude that basically watched the video and then like took everything that Ty Lopez said and put it on a blog post. And so I was like, mm -hmm. I can definitely crush this guy. Um, you know, that's why I love it because it's only 80 searches a week. In reality, even if I'm number one, that'll be, I don't know, three email signups a week or something like that, but it's compounding. It, it doesn't matter how many it is, you know, it's, I do this for a year or two and then I don't have to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just, wow. I just have opted into your site. I love it. Yeah. I, I, think, just, you, I think you, you have um, missing low hanging fruit opportunity is right after I hit confirm subscription, you can set a custom redirect and convert kit instead of sending me to thanks for opting in, just send them to a page on your website again, that tells some story. So it's instead of exiting out, then they got to go check their email again. You can send them right to something that that first email would be. So there's a little tactical. But you're not scared that you'll lose the double opt-in from that, that they won't. No, you, go you can email. use the double opt-in when they click the confirm, instead of it sending oh, them shit. to a random convert kit page, you send them to a page on your website. Like, Hey, I'm Tim. Thanks for opting in. Blah, blah, blah. Huh. Learning new things every day. <laughs> I'm like going to do that ASAP. That's yeah, no, it's idea. because it's, I think the biggest low hanging fruit for people who have newsletters is when someone opts into your newsletter, if you use the double opt in, don't send them to a random page, tell them a story about yourself, because that keeps the whole flow, right? They get the opt in email, they click confirm, you send them back to their website. It's like, hey, here's my story versus, hey, here's a convert page. Now go check your email again, right? So you try to optimize that flow. Real, real quick, this is a, uh... Uh, I had this question too, and I see a couple people asking in the chat. So Tim, quick uh, breakdown of, so how are you finding these opportunities? How do you find these terms, tools you use? What's your best practice there? Well, I use mostly SEMrush. Um, Hrefs is better. They have a better backlink index, basically. So Google doesn't just give you the backlink index. Well, they do, but it's on, um, on Search Console. And so like these companies basically have to scan the whole internet to find out where all the links are. And Ahrefs is a little bit better for that. But really like these are expensive tools. And anytime somebody comes with this question, I always tell them just Google stuff, like just freaking Google stuff. Make sure you go on incognito, like make sure. So if you're using Chrome, I should say, you go incognito because Google will give you different results depending on like what your search behavior already is just because it kind of figures out it figures you out and it, it knows um like what it is that you're looking for kind of before you do so go incognito and google stuff and then like click on the top three like you'll be able to tell pretty quickly like this website looks really really legit i probably shouldn't try to go after this keyword like this is just some blogger guy who has a cool blog and like somehow wrote something that just ended up ranking for something um so yeah, SEMrush and Ahrefs are both great tools. I know there's also free keyword tools, which I don't know, but like truly, truly Google stuff because that's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Fascinating. Any other uh, quick questions that you noticed in the chat, Tiki? No, I don't think so. I think uh, where where we should leave is, Tim, if you're giving someone who's kind of a beginner looking to build their business with email optimization, their website, social, what are you telling them? What's the one thing you've kind of picked up on this playing in both ballparks? <laughs> you know, I would... I would say the first thing to do if they want to sharpen their skills is, is to follow you guys. Like there's a lot of content on the internet. Check's he on the did, way, man. He, Check he is did. on the way. Yeah. Tim, but remind like, me I, to pay you for that after. I forgot I asked you to say that. Sure. No worries. Um, you can pay on me. I'll, I'll text you. But like there's such thing as good writing. Like there really is such a thing as good writing. And everybody knows when they see good writing because we just can't help it. We're, we're captivated by it and learn those foundational skills. So I got lucky in that when I was building Sober Nation, I discovered this website called Copy Blogger, which taught me everything. You know, like the founder was like an idol of mine. And I was really, really, again, fortunate that like 10 years into it, I was able to buy the majority share of the website. And it was like a huge moment in my life because it just like, it changed my life. Like I'm, I'm uneducated, you know, like I got a hard work ethic and I like to read. And so I, I learned how to do all this by reading copy blogger every day. I do think that copy blogger is more aligned for freelance writers than it is people that are trying to like share their ideas. Right. And so the best way to get good at writing is just to write a ton of stuff and just write bad stuff and publish it because that's the hardest part is like publishing it. Um, just write 10 tweets a day, write until you think that nobody's looking and then keep writing. And like, there's such a thing as good writing. Like you have to figure that out first. Um, once they get past that point and they're trying to actually establish, like, like you said, Dickie, like some real estate on the internet, um, I would start by building what's called cornerstone pages. And a, a better example of this is actually my agency. I don't do this on my blog, um, but you want to come up with like the five to 10 keywords that really, really define like what it is that you offer. Um, you know, so like copy blogger is probably a little bit easier because we're all a little bit more familiar with it. So on copy blogger, it's just said, Copywriting 101, it's email marketing, it's blogging, you know, it's like the foundation of your website, write those first. And then everything you write from that point forward kind of circles around the foundation of these pages and, and Google will recognize that they'll recognize like, oh, okay, I get it. Like all of the pages that this guy is writing or this girl is writing all link back to these cornerstone pages. So like this cornerstone is basically what like you're about. Hmm. Pillar, I've heard it like pillar, pillar piece. We can yeah, do that. Sure. Awesome. Sure. Well, that's good advice to end on. Tim, where can we, uh, where can we send people? Where can they find you? Sign up for your newsletter. Yeah, just my blog, timstods.com. I'm uh, Timstods, T-I-M-S-T-O-D-Z. Yeah, I'm working really hard on it. And um, I'm having like a great time. It's been really cool joining in the cool kids club with you guys swimming in the wake. So um, I appreciate you guys. And, and thank you so much for, for letting me share my story with all of you. Amazing. Thanks. Thanks for dropping knowledge, man. I always, I love our discussions about these two worlds because I think they go hand in hand, you know? Mm -hmm. Not one yeah. or the other, not a duel. They're hand in hand. And if you're playing both, <laughs> you're, you're steps ahead of everyone else for sure. Thank you. But I'm still right. <laughs> Yeah, 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 we'll see. <laughs> All, right. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll we'll see you guys at the next one. Have a good one. See ya.